Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. And I'm super excited for our deck this week, because it is super fun. We are playing Mono White Blink in Modern, and as you can see, 97 bucks in the paper world, 67 ticks on Magic Online, so not mega cheap, but when you consider how expensive Modern decks are, 400, 600, 800, 1,000, 1,600 dollars for Jund, it's a super good deal, and the deck has been surprisingly good and competitive. It isn't blatantly in-your-face powerful, but it's super tricky, hard for opponents to play around, can get a lot of wins just by uh, kind of outmaneuvering the opponent with all these little edges, which makes it really fun to play. The games are very intricate and interesting. Anyway, a quick reminder before we get to the deck, if you enjoy this mono white blink deck and you enjoy budget magic in general, it would be super awesome of you if you could take a minute, click that subscribe button down in the corner of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Mono White Blink. So the main idea of this deck is to blink stuff for value, and we have a bunch of powerful flyers that can do that. So Flicker Wisp is just a really powerful card. A 3-1 flyer for three gives it Vendillion click-like stats, so it's a reasonably fast clock in the air. Of course it's fragile, dies to literally everything with only one toughness, but it's super powerful because we can use it to blink our own stuff for value value, plus we can use it to blink our opponent's stuff to get it out of the way, blink one of our opponent's lands. It's tricky, but one of the things we can do is with two Flicker Wisps, we can flicker our own Flicker Wisp with the second one, and then the flickered Flicker Wisp comes back into play on our end step, and then we can blink an opposing Tron piece, for an example, and our opponent is without that land for their entire next turn because it doesn't come in until the next end step, so it's a good way to disrupt the opponent and do some tricky things that way. Restoration Angel is a great way to save our creatures. It's a awesome clock in the air. As a 3-4, it's the exact opposite of Flicker Wisp. It avoids a lot of removal. Uh, Abrupt Decay, Lightning Bolt, Lightning Helix, none of that stuff gets Restoration Angel. So it's a really good clock. We can get value out of it by blinking our Flicker Wisp at the end of our turn to blink out one of our opponent's things for the turn, uh, blink some of our value plays, and then Cloud Shift is just the most efficient way to blink something. One mana, creature we control, return it. So if our opponent goes to Path our Restoration Angel, we can Cloud Shift it, Restoration Angel comes back in, we can blink our Flicker Wisp and Flicker something else. So there's just a lot of crazy synergies with all this blinking, blinking things that blink, blinking things that flicker. So this is kind of the foundation of the deck. So what are we blinking? Well, the sweetest combo in the deck is a Chroma Angel of Fury. So we are a mono white deck, so there's no way we can ever cast a Chroma. But a Chroma is actually really absurd. It is a 6-6. Six -six. It has pro white and pro blue. And those stats mean it has protection from just about everything that could possibly hurt it. Lightning Bolt can't kill it, Abrupt Decay can't kill it, Dismember can't kill it, Path to Exile can't kill it, uh, Vapor Snag and things like that can't bounce it. So if we can get an Acroma on the battlefield, it's super hard for just about any deck in Modern to deal with it. And as a 6-6 six, six Flyer would Trample, it's really hard to deal with. Protection from white means opposing Lingering Souls tokens can't block it. So the trick here is it has Morph. So normally the Morph cost is really expensive. Six mana, you pay it face down, you need a bunch of red mana. But what we're trying to do is play Acroma face down, maybe on turn three, turn four, and then we can use any of our blink spells to exile our chroma and then we return it to the battlefield as a 6-6 six -six, which is just super powerful. Speaking of blink synergies, we also have Apocrisite and Blade Splicer. Now, Blade Splicer is pretty obvious. When it enters the battlefield, you get a 3-3 three -three Golem token and then it gives Golem's first strike. So if every time we flicker this or blink it with our Cloud Shifts, our Restos, our Flicker Wisps, we get another Golem so we can just kind of go wide with Golem columns take over the game that way plus they all have first strike which means two of them can like 
profitably block a worm coil engine because first strike deals damage first, it wipes out the worm coil, our opponent doesn't kill our stuff, doesn't gain life, etc. Apocrisite is a little deeper, and this one is <laughs> is pretty sweet. So it's a 1-1 one, one for 2, not really exciting, but it has this weird suspend ability, so when it dies... It gets exiled with three time counters and gains suspend. So the idea is you can like block with it and then three turns later you get it back. And Wizards decided, well, since they gotta wait these three turns to get it back, we'll give it a bonus when it comes back into play. So it says it enters the battlefield with three plus one plus one counters if you didn't cast it from your hand. So the idea is that you will block with it, it'll get suspended, three turns later it comes back down as a four four. Well, the way it's worded, we can also just blink it or flicker it. So we can play an Apocrisite on turn two. On turn three, we Flicker Wisp it. Apocrisite comes back into play. We have a 4-4 four, four Apocrisite, also the Flicker Wisp. That's seven power that can immediately start beating down. Plus, we still get the advantage in a really long game if our opponent's Lightning Bolting and Wrath of Godding and things like that. Our Apocrisite will get suspended and come back down eventually, so it's difficult to deal with in the long term. But the main idea is, it's another great Flicker target, because it just gets really big Is a 4-4 four, four for two mana. And and then we have our card advantage engines. Wall of Omens draws a card when it enters the battlefield. Thraben Inspector gives us a clue. Also gives us some early game defense and blockers. But basically, we want to play these. Then we want to flicker and blink these. And then we draw a bunch of cards. Make sure we keep dragging our actions, our chromas, things like that. So this is just how we keep cycling through our deck, making sure our hand stays full. And then one Fiend Hunter can do some cool tricks with Cloud Shift. So three mana, the idea is it'll exile another creature, and then when it leaves the battlefield, that creature will come back into play. Well, the way it's worded, if we cast a Fiend Hunter, and we can also do this with Restoration Angel if we have enough mana, but we cast a Fiend Hunter, we can use a Cloud Shift or Restoration Angel to blink it while the Exile trigger is on the stack, and the Fiend Hunter is going to create another trigger saying to return the creature, but the creature isn't gone yet, so that trigger resolves first, then the Exile trigger resolves, and our opponent's creature is gone forever. So we can turn it into permanent removal. Uh, the downside is it dies to a lot of stuff with only three toughness, but it can be pretty tricky, and it's a way we can get rid of anything, an Emrakul, or any thread that bothers us permanently with the help of some of our blink effects. And then for removal, we have Dismembers. I wish they were Path to Exiles. It seems weird to play Dismembers in a mono white deck, but Dismember is much, much cheaper than Path to Exile, so it's a budget consideration. Also a single Condemn, and a single Oblivion Ring to deal with non-creature permanents primarily. In the mana base, we have 18 planes, 4 Ghost Quarters, and a Tech Edge. A ghost Quarter and Tech Edge. Lots of people are playing Tron right now in Magic Online. So having lots of Ghost Quarters and Tech Edges give us some chance if we can draw like 2 or 3 Ghost Quarters in the same game to compete with Tron. So that's why we're there. Plus, it's sort of a free roll. We have 18 white sources, so we can get away with playing a few colorless lands, and it's not too much of a hindrance. As far as the sideboard, Tormod Crypt deals with Dredge primarily. It's not great against Snapcaster decks. Uh, Relic or Progenitus is much better against those type of decks, but Tormod Script is just the cheapest graveyard hate available uh, to fight against Dredge. Disenchant for artifacts and enchantments, Pithing Needle for Oblivion Stones and Ugins and Nahiris and all that kind of stuff. Then Ghostly Prison to help against aggressive decks like Affinity, anything that's going wide with little creatures. Blessed Alliance to help against Infect. Gutshot also good against Infect. Another Fiend Hunter. If Fiend Hunter isn't going to die to Lightning Bolt for one mana, it's actually pretty solid in some matchups. So depending on the matchup, we can bring in more Fiend Hunters as removal. And then another Oblivion Ring and Filgree Familiar to help against more aggressive decks. It's sort of our version of Kitchen Fangs. Works well with our blink effects to keep gaining us more life. Uh, basically, we could play literal Kitchen Fangs, and we would if we were on a budget, but Filgree Familiar is the new budget substitute for any color in modern for Kitchen Fangs. And that is Mono White Blink, and the deck is pretty sweet. It is uh, surprisingly powerful, and like I said in the intro, it's not that 
we just overwhelm our opponent with huge stuff. Occasionally, we go turn one Apocrisite, turn two Flicker Apocrisite with Flicker Wisp, and just beat our opponent down. But really, the deck is about being tricky, getting these little edges thanks to our blinking, uh, blocking something with Wall of Omens, and then flickering it with Restoration Angel so it stays alive. And then we do have the I Win mode with a Chroma, which is actually insane against... A huge percentage of decks in modern. There's not many real wraths in modern, and there's not much actual hard removal like Doomblade or something that's going to kill a Chroma. So if we can flip a Chroma, it's a really fast clock that's going to win us a lot of games. So I was really impressed with this deck. It's really fun to play. If you like kind of tricky, intricate, very small edge generating type decks, you're really going to like this one. There's a lot of play to it, and it's just, it's all about getting getting these really slight edges, figuring out how to use our blink effects to maximize these slight edges. Anyway, that's Mono White Blink for Modern, and that's our budget magic for today, so thank you very much for watching, I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos, and I will talk to you soon.